Today we are visiting Coiti Castle. Coiti began life towards the end of the 11th century as a simple rimwork fortification comprising of a ditch and a bank. In the 12th century, the Norman Sir Payne, the Demon, Turberville, one of the fabled 12 Knights of Glamorgan, built a three-storey rectangular stone keep and a curtain wall. This was by no means a luxurious structure intended as it was to be a defensive one. In the 14th century, much of the castle was restructured with the addition of a domestic range attached to the keep. This was a much more lavish structure with vaulted floors and ceilings. In the 15th century, a chapel wing was added to the eastern end of the domestic range. During the 16th century, the Gamage family, to whom the castle had passed through marriage in the previous century, completely remodelled the living quarters, adding a new storey, new windows and two chimney stacks. The castle was abandoned sometime around the 17th century. With so much of the castle just gone, you have to wonder how much of it has turned up in other buildings in the town. There was a lot of stonework here once and there's an awful lot of houses around here that look remarkably grey in colour. They've got a wall full of archer slits down here so they've got the double whammy protection of the really deep moat and the archers. So this is your end ward, around which goes everything else. You've got your keep, you've got your gates. This is the inner fortified enclosure. I'm standing in the bottom of the keep. Now, when they renovated the place, they built these enormous stone columns with these also enormous vaulted ceilings. Now, sadly, most of the vaulted ceilings have gone, but you can see just from the size of these stones, just how enormous they must be. I mean, that's that's over a foot across that thing. That's a big, big ceiling. I mean, you could bounce up and down a lot upstairs and I shouldn't imagine the neighbours would hear a thing. I found a kitchen and a bread oven. Most places you go, they've got a fireplace, but they haven't got a bread oven. And this has, and that's really cool because it's partly intact, so you can see all the underworkings, which is rather nice. These things are part of another vaulted ceiling. I mean, they really meant it when they were going for their vaulted ceilings. They're everywhere. I'm not complaining. It's reminiscent of the sort of castles that you would see on the telly as a kid. I mean, we're talking the Hollywood style castles here, you know, big vaulted ceilings and all that sort of stuff, and it all looked very swashbuckly. I can only assume that they were basing their castles on what we have over here, as opposed to going back in time and making sure that all the castles in history lined up with that Hollywood look. I can't imagine they've got either the budget or the DeLoreans for that. You've got a lot of gatehouses in this place. You've got the West Gatehouse, you've got the East Gatehouse, and you've got the Middle Gatehouse. And this is the East Gatehouse, and it is the most intact one of the lot, because you can still walk through the gateway and you've still got the tower bit. And it's actually really pretty inside, usually home to pigeons. Inside the gatehouse, you've got what looked like a lot of doorways on different levels, and that's because the gatehouses were converted into luxury apartments later on. And you also might have noticed that considering this is a gatehouse, it would have had archer slits, and they don't have anything like that. They're all big windows designed to let in light and be comfortable. Well, this is the moat, and it's really quite deep. Most places you go to that have a moat, you could get down into it quite easily because it's filled back up. It doesn't have any water in it, but that's fine because it's still a really good example of a moat. Now this moat you can walk all the way around and it is intact all the way around as well, which is quite nice because it means you can see the outside of the castle. It's still quite largely intact from the outside. Well, enough intact that you can see what was what, because a lot of places you can't see that. There are bits that are crumbled away, but other than that, it's a really good example of a castle. Your thoughts on Coity Castle? I thought it was a really good castle. It's got a good layout, it's got all the right ruiny parts, it's got the structures there in place so you can see what was here. So you've got little glimpses of how it was all put together. Hmm. See you next time! TTFN!